Onward and upward. Full review for the Pikes Peak Marathon Racing Shoe 2021. I went with the Solomon Pulsar. Not an easy decision. I've been testing this shoe all summer. If you've been following along closely on Strava, let's connect on Strava. Also over on the website, demoreglobalrunning.com. It has not been, it was not an easy decision. I'll just say right now, I tested a lot of trail shoes this year. It's been an incredible summer of training, getting the vertical here in Colorado, seeking beauty with all of you. But at the end of the day, the Innovate X Talon G210 versus the Solomon Pulsar was the question I had to wrestle with. I went with this guy. I went with the Solomon Pulsar. There it is. I believe we're sitting at about, you know, well, before race day, it was around 50 or 60 miles. There it is on your screen. Bottom line, I took it the distance, okay? Probably put at least 10 to 15,000 feet of vertical gain for the testing. Let's dive in. Here we go, a neutral troll. Oh, we need a flock of geese, everyone. Flock of geese, six millimeter drop for that midsole, 24 and a half millimeter stack height in the heel with 18 and a half in the forefoot. Women size eight, men size nine on your screen. And yes, in my size, looking at five. 0.8 ounces that is that's basically why i chose the shoe okay i'm just gonna say right now that is 5.8 is unbelievable for weight for a trail running shoe trail racing shoe i mean that's just, uh, just <laughs> there's not even a shoe i mean even the innovate shoe i think is like 6.1 or 6.2 which is close great job solomon which is why you're getting a nine out of ten for the weight score. We're looking at a sock-like upper. It's a tight mesh to prevent debris from entering, okay? It's single layer. Uh, it's got the pull lacing system, all right? There you go. Uh, it's called, it's their matrix upper is what they're calling it. Very, you know, very loosey goose booty style collar that wraps around your ankle. Very loosey goosey through that heel counter. So if you prefer uh, a little more rigidity through your heel counter, uh, I would say probably don't pick this shoe up. They do have a little padding though. Reminiscent of some uh, some Nike shoes as of late. Actually, almost all Nike shoes, it seems like, has some extra padding on the inside of the shoe through the heel counter. Pleased with the upper. I think in the future, the upper will be a little more nimble, a little more form-fitting to the top of the foot. Uh, yeah, I think they're making their way with respect. It just... Uh, yeah, I just one little area that I think they could improve to help with the lockdown. And let's do the toe. Yeah, so if you kick a rock out there, you're going to be protected a little bit through that toe cap at the top or at the end, I should say, of the upper. So lockdown, we're going 7.5 out of 10, but overall score, 8 out of 10. Um, I'm, I'm pleased. I should mention the tongue is not separated. It's all one piece of material, which for racing I like. And the tongue has a little extra padding there, so you don't feel these cord, this cord lacing system on top of the foot. Moving on to that energy surge midsole. It's an EVA and Olefin blend. Okay, um, okay. I wore the Innovate X Talon G210 in 2020 for the marathon and I was yearning for a little more protection underfoot from the midsole on the way down the mountain. That is another reason I went with the Pulsar, okay? Just a little extra cushion, a little extra bounce. That's what you're getting in this midsole. Rider and energy return, amazing. 8.75 out of 10. So if you're racing lightweight, and energy return through that midsole more so than the upper, even to a certain extent more so than the outsole. 
That's what I was really looking for for this year in 2021 for the Pikes Peak Marathon. Okay, so 8.75 out of 10 for that ride on energy return. Overall score, 8.5 out of 10, mostly because I'm not feeling rocks uh, through that midsole, poking through. All right, so that's that's why the overall score for the midsole, it's just... Oh my goodness, it's just butter to the bread, everyone. 100%, there you go. Moving on to that outsole now. Score did go down from the first impression. And this is where I, I wrestled all summer long, Solomon, with this outsole. We need another millimeter, at least under the forefoot. We need another millimeter of lug depth. At least another millimeter. Ah, oh, we need another millimeter. That, that's why I almost went with the Innovate, okay? Because on Pikes Peak, the grab, it, the top of the mountain, especially the, the, the trail gets a little loosey-goosey with respect to the gravel. It, it's just a little gravelly based. So that's why I struggled. I really struggled, everyone. So Solomon, six and a half, I believe I gave it out of 10. We need at least another millimeter, maybe even two for that outsole, especially under the four foot moving on to the fit standard score seven and a half out of ten comfort score solid eight out of ten i'll get mostly because of the uh because of the midsole ride not necessarily because of the upper combination positives and drawbacks uh positive is the midsole is just so light so bouncy so much energy return and my drawback is going to be that outsole grip okay um not made for overly overly aggressive trails it'll do the trick but if you need if you're on steep steep trails you know just beware that that outsole grip is not going to be the best out there durability prediction not the most and i'm not looking for that for a trail racing shoe right like if you if i race in the shoe three times that's a lot you know what i mean you know four times that's a lot of racing in one summer so 250 miles you know the midsole is creasing already after you know 60 miles or whatever it is so it's not going to go forever and ever and ever which is why the durability score is six and a half out of ten how will i use this shoe who's the best for speed on the trails uh racing pike's peak baby pike's peak marathon okay that's how i'll use this shoe moving forward okay uh price point whoa 180 dollars make sure you save it for race days listen i'm willing to pay if you're gonna train so so hard for a peak race i'm willing to pay i'm willing to pinch some pennies pay the price to get a light light shoe underfoot so i'm okay with 180 dollars there you go seven and a half out of ten other shoes to buy you know oh man this is tough i mean there's just no other shoe that's that light, but I mean, if you go Hoka Evo Speed Goat, I mean, I'll throw the Innovate X Talon G210, I'll throw the Hoka Evo Jaws, but at the end of the day, this is the lightest shoe out there right now for trail racing. Keep And keeping in mind, those other shoes, their outsole grip is going to be a little bit more, so it's it was hard to find another shoe exactly comparable to this one shoe quick specs on your screen for the solomon pulsar soak it in one more time six millimeter drop five point what was it seven ounces again five point uh yeah seven ounces in my size unbelievable uh midsole is that energy surge and coming in at 180 dollars full review there you go 7.83 out of 10. it's basically an eight out of ten shoe for me um it's so close in the sense that, you know, yeah, price point, the biggest, the biggest thing, it's the, it's the outsole. That's what we got to work on in 2022, Solomon. Okay, pulling the comment of the day from the uh, Solomon Pulsar. Will it be my Pikes Peak Marathon racing shoe from earlier in 2021? That blog, upper right hand corner. Uh, this is a little bit long, but here we go. Shout out to Colin uh, in Halifax, I believe. Uh, he says, or she, I think, I think he, the Solomon Speed Cross 5 was the last shoe that really got me excited. I watched your review of the fire red ones and then had to wait almost two years before they went on sale so I could afford them. 95 Canadian dollars delivered to my door last week, taking them out on their maiden voyage this weekend on my favorite trail. I've been wearing them around the house and they feel amazing on foot. I tried to wear them to bed the first night, but my wife wouldn't let me. So yes, it's Colin. Uh, you get the comment of the day. That made me laugh. That's why 
You get the, the big bad wolves. They're not out here. That was the name of my Solomon, my original Solomon Speed Cross Fives. Love though. Actually, I will, I will link to that. Those that was two, two and a half years ago. Those vlogs from two and a half years ago. So there you go, everyone. Question of the day. Um, when was the last time you were really excited? about a running shoe or running gear purchase, like really excited, you know, where you just were to the moon. You couldn't wait for it to arrive at your door, like Colin waiting for his, I mean, waited two years and good job pinching pennies, Colin. So that was, that is the question of the day. Thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I might toss it to one more clip. We shall see. But at the end of the day, thank you for being here. Thanks for watching. Solomon Pulsar was my Pikes Peak Marathon racing shoe. Unbelievable. What a training block. What a summer. Oh, 5.7 ounces. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say, everyone. All right. We will toss it to um, a vlog that connects to Solomon, to Pikes Peak. We shall see. All right. Solomon, Pikes Peak, something right there, right there, right there, right there. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Seek beauty. Work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.